without further ado, uh, let me introduce very briefly Soma Mundal. Um, you are the CTO of Emmy Clothing Company, and, and we got to know in the process of you <laughs> being um, joining the company uh, a couple of years ago. And before that, you've been working as the head of software development in another company and as a product owner and, and whatnot. So, um, yes, the topic tech venture and business case or tech solution. And you are, would I call, an adamant supporter of the case tech solution. Yeah, I mean, thank you for the introduction and, and it's nice to be here. And uh, when it comes to this topic, business solutions or just business ideas versus a tech solution, well, I have a lot to say on the tech solution, but uh, fundamentally, like I said before, on many occasions in our you know, friendly chats that mm. uh, problems comes first in this industry. Yeah. It has to come first. And um, all the effort is about solving problems. Yeah. Not many people want to solve problems. Most people ignore problems, just face them and is looking to buy a solution. So if you are one of the few who are brave enough to wanting to solve a problem, yeah. then only a solution comes. And then you try to make sense of a business around it. And when it comes to the <coughs> business around it, mm. it depends on your skill sets, to be honest. Mm -hmm. If you are a tech-oriented person, your solution will be tech-inspired. If you're not, it will be just margin-inspired. Yeah. Or if you're both, it will have elements of both. Or if you are not greedy at all, it will be a non-profit. So it, there are a lot of choices. and. Uh, we should respect all of them, but uh, what is a tech solution? I mean, that's the thing. Yeah. yeah. So, how do you how do you define, say, a good tech solution? Yeah. Uh, let me touch briefly on what is a tech solution. Sure. You run a sales organization. Mm. That means you have made a product and you want to sell it. You have hired salespeople and want to hire more. Yeah. You give them a phone, a laptop, an email, a few emails and contacts. Yeah. That's enough to sell that any salesperson would say that's enough. But if you go a bit deeper, mm -hmm. you're trying to close a multi-million euro deal and your salesperson leaves, you have no process to get all the progress which has been made and yeah. stuff like that. That's where Salesforce comes in. That's where HubSpot comes in. Yeah, that's true. where different solutions come in. So. At the beginning, tech solution is not appealing to people. Yeah. It's just a cost. Yeah. It's just a risk. Mm. Hiring the expensive resources in any country for nothing. Yeah. But if you want to be successful, that's when it comes in. If you want to have, if you're using like biggest or any kind of superlatives in your tech agenda, that's when a tech solution or a good tech solution mm. comes in in that sense. So that's just, of course, a personal opinion guided by statistics. But yeah, not everybody needs a tech solution. For, for those who need it and those who want to grow big, those who want to scale vertically, horizontally and stuff like that, yeah. they need it definitely. So, and there is hardly, I mean, good and bad are perspectives. What's good today is bad tomorrow. That's how tech mm, is. True. It's an ever-changing kind of landscape when it comes to tech. And yeah, I mean, a good tech solution, I would say for at this moment is if it fixes the problems of the past, mm -hmm. if it takes care of your present yeah. and tries to kind of take care three years into the future, then you have made a good tech solution. You have made a tech solution if it just fixes today and tomorrow you will think of another solution. Yeah. So. There's, that's the basic difference, I would say, between a good or a bad tech solution in yeah. that sense. Yeah, very good. How do you see the kind of like the importance of, um, well, a number of things, of course, but, you know, thinking about, you know, building a tech solution, um, you know, it's kind of like, the, I think there's at least two elements that I touch upon quite often, you mm -hmm. know, when, when working with people. Um, into new roles and etc. There's the question of you know scalability mm -hmm. you know, in terms of the, I suppose you know there's both the operations side yeah. 
and then there's the um, um, the sort of uh, the customer facing product yeah. or interface. Yeah. And uh, and then I suppose you know that's being already two elements. Yeah. So so yeah. let's 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 tackle those first. Yeah. I mean. As as a CTO of a company, you have to face stakeholders, mm. people who would invest money <clears throat> yeah. and take risks on what you're proposing. And the easiest answer to give to anybody who is doing that is tech solutions are scalable. Yeah. Well, that's partially true. Yeah. Tech solutions are as scalable as any other solutions, mm. you know. If you wanted to sell more, you can just get another salesperson. Yeah. If you, you know, <laughs> so, you can scale it up. Yes, yeah, yeah. it's it's also scaling, right? So yeah. so if you if you wanted to, if you have one shop and you want to have two shops, what's stopping you? Yeah. Right. So what does a tech? Uh, so what advantage does tech bring in this? Yeah. The tech brings the advantage that. All these scalability things yeah. can be just done with a click of a button if you're smart enough. Yeah. So today we have our business in Finland and Estonia. Yeah. Tomorrow we want to open in Stockholm, provided paperwork are done. It will take me four hours to open our shop in Stockholm. And we are live and we are there. And digital marketing can start and we can blow up the market, yeah. provided somebody is money. Now, if this was a brick and mortar case, well, Imagine how much planning goes through that. Not saying that's bad. This is good. Just mm. saying that the effort required yeah. is less. Yeah. But the effort put in, you know, you have to take solutions. You have to put in the money upfront. Yeah. So that's the thing. I'm, you have I'm, invested and everything. Exactly. I'm only thinking about kind of like the work mm -hmm. being put in to think about the user experience, you know, and, and different markets, mm. and, and then of course the front end and backside of things, and uh, yeah, and and, and etc. Yeah, and this is the more important thing for whoever has a company and thinking about scaling and investing in tech and stuff. Well, you have to be first very clear on the agenda that you're taking a risk. Yeah. Tech investments are risky. Mm. Tech investments can have zero returns yeah. if nobody buys, because you're putting in all the work and building everything and investing in the team and stuff and hoping all this is for good cause. So when, but if you take that risk, you might yield a 10x reward versus a 1x in traditional way. Yeah. So or a 50x when it comes to unicorns and stuff like that, you know. So all unicorns are tech unicorns now. So yeah. in that sense, so it just depends on ambition and and what you want to do and and what kind of risks you want to take. You know, in that yeah. sense. Yeah. True. True. I'm thinking about the case that you work on, mm -hmm. Emmy. I'm thinking about the kind of like this, you know, this chicken or egg issue that we've been talking the kind of like in this series um, you know is it the business idea business case or the tech solution that yeah, you know yeah. drives that drives through um, secondhand clothes yeah. and the marketplace yeah um, I suppose it in your case I well in your own words you know what's the sort of what's the driving sort of a um, differentiator yeah. Uh, yeah. of Emmy. So, I mean, the problem has existed for a long time mm. that people were consuming fast fashion. Yeah. And the uh, our closets are piled up with clothes. And the only way we get rid of them is sending them to charity or these secondhand shops, physical secondhand shops and yeah. stuff like that. So. Yeah. And or it's a problem faced by, well, 100% of the population or yeah. maybe 90% of the population in that sense. Exactly. And I think you have a very sort of a <laughs> positive mindset of people. It's either charity yeah. or secondhand, because I could imagine that a lot of people just put them in the junk. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's probably one of the big environmental issues. Yeah. And and that's that's exactly where it starts, you know. And... Uh, where our founders aim to do, and our founders, one of them was technical, one of them was into business. Yeah. So they just, the business person gathered all the business contacts mm. and whoever would like to be part of this, and the tech person started a Shopify store. Right. So both 
pillars were kind of together, and yeah. they were a couple yeah. from Lohia. And, and uh, that's how it started, tech and business starting together, mm. coexisting, building each other. Yeah. And, and f- after a certain time, it became bigger, so more people were hired into the setup. Yeah. And then more investors came in, so aim was to go even bigger. So yeah. more tech people were hired, more business people were hired, mm. more logistics people were hired. The whole, you know, trying to make the whole process smoother, yeah. making sure that this digital only process is enough, yeah. you know, to get your closet out of your door and into somebody else's closet, mm. giving them a second life. Yeah. And on top of that, the data around it, mm. making sense and everything. So. Yeah. It's, it's this e-commerce or what they call re-commerce field yeah. has, has multiple benefits in that sense. And uh, yeah, I mean, my personal role has been to grow the tech and make it scalable, make it make it the next generation. Yeah. And uh, we can go more into the details, but mostly that. <laughs> in the, yeah. yeah. There's that... I'm, I'm sort of thinking a, a number of things in my mind, kind of like, you know, uh, but if we start, a, of, start with the user experience set yeah. of things, and, um, uh, and I'm thinking, you know, what you said previously, you know, let's open up a shop mm. you know, in Stockholm or where, where, mm. wherever, and uh, in comparison to <clears throat> then, you know, just providing people with access to the store. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, what's been your principle or how do you see kind of like the whole notion of of user experience yeah yeah what what should it be like so this this is a i I mean i have a very strong opinion when it comes to user experience um it's associated with two terms Hmm. it's easy and lazy (laughs) so (laughs) i like those (laughs) yeah so we as humans are conditioned to use something which is easy yeah which makes you lazy, yeah. right? It, it's with any tech company that we have seen. Walt, food closer to you. Yeah. Uber, taxi closer to you. Yeah. E-commerce, shop in your hands. Exactly. Right, so easy and lazy. If you can do those two things correct, yeah. then you will achieve a lot of great things because yeah. humans like easy and lazy. Yeah. And it will work in any sphere, yeah. uh, except workout. That's a different thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you get the thumb muscle, you know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. yeah. So that's the thing. Uh, for somebody who is living, let's say, two, 20 kilometers away from the nearest city drop off the city center or 50 kilometers yeah. away, it's not feasible for them to go do this thing, drop and think, you know, put things to the nearest store and become responsible and adopt sustainability and try to buy groceries and mm. you know, fill up their car and, yeah. and do all these things. So yeah. all these efforts are being created to make things easy. Yeah. And for us, that easiness to use is very important. Yeah. And we have implemented just by a click of a button, we have your details, you have made an account, and yeah. now you want to initiate a sell, yeah, or initiate things coming to you no know, coming from your door and leaving your doorstep. So, yeah. just place a button. You can schedule a home pickup, yeah, and it's gone. You're in the city center. You know we have partners around. We have our own boxes. You know if you have filled the form, just drop it. It's ours. You don't have to label your clothes. You don't have to do anything. Just need to pack a bag, send it to us. We will sell it. Yeah, we'll sort it. We'll sell it. We'll give it to charity. We'll give. Um, if it's not sold or if we we'll return it back to you, depends on how you have selected things. Yeah. And the money just directly comes to your bank account. And for a buyer, you have the same experience as shopping in Zalando, shopping in any e-commerce store. So it just balances the both world. Yeah. And then there is a whole iceberg underneath it, which you don't have to see, Yeah. which is our problem. <laughs> and that is our problem to solve. Yeah. Yeah, and that iceberg is is what you would have to do in the D2C space yeah. yourself. <clears throat> yeah. Where people are showing up to your door, mm. where you have to organize meetups in coffee shops to yeah. sell your things and stuff like that. Yeah. You just don't have to worry about it. You know. Yeah. You know, in between your work you have five minutes. Yeah. Just do it. Yeah. 
and and take take one step towards a responsible life and stuff like that. So, exactly. Yeah. So all the logistics, all the technological yeah. issues, all yeah. the digital marketing, yada yada yada. Yeah, everything like... is just underneath. It's just buyer clicks a button, seller clicks a button, cloth is gone from one place to another. Yeah. Just that. Yeah. So that's 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 what we are working on, and that's what we will keep on working on. Yeah. 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 Um, how do you see to to what extent can business and and technology people sort of uh, um, see to the other side, if you like? Yeah. I'm um, yeah. sort of thinking your role and, and, <laughs> yeah. and what we've been discussing. You you sort of have a, quite a balanced view at least where i stand from yeah um how do you how do you see so there is a stigma around tech people that either we fix your computer or we code what was the like a uh, second like one with the code or program or uh, just code. Yeah, 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 yeah yeah so so we are good for those two things yeah exactly right <laughs> so we are coders mm. we put our put in one side of the company yeah. where we put a manager there yeah. and we all code in the computers and yeah. we drink a lot of energy drinks. <laughs> That's one way of looking at it. I shouldn't be laughing, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is, it is. I mean, it's just very common. And uh, we are seen as intellectuals, we are seen as hipsters, mm. and, you know, depending on where we are. And there yeah. is a stigma around these things. And we are also seen as high commodity because we are less. Mm. And there is a demand for people so true true but it doesn't have to be that right and your job description for every other role except tech roles yeah. have ROIs customer acquisition marketing everything else and when it comes to tech roles it's just eight years of experience with this language 10 years of experience with that language mm. 15 years of experience with a language which didn't even exist for 15 years yeah. so <laughs> it doesn't have to be like that right you just acknowledge the skill set and yeah. then have simple business rules yeah. you're joining a company yeah. to help that vertical grow to make that much revenue and this is how the whole team will coexist you will coexist with product you will coexist with marketing you will coexist with sales mm. to make everything better so you, you as an individual com, com, uh, contributor or a group con, bit contributor mm. will work towards the same goal. Yeah. So that helps a lot. But the change in mindset from the classical mindset to this yeah. is a transformation. Mm. So remember the 2000s agile transformation? Yeah. And the next transformation would be these tribes. And many people are doing it. That True. There is a goal and there is a set of people who can achieve that goal. Yeah. And just that, nothing else, no fancy things. Yeah. Everybody is the same equal contributor to that system. Yeah. So yeah, once we get there, it will be fun. <laughs> yeah. Very true, very true. <coughs> um, I'm thinking about, I would love to touch upon one of the uh, questions that I received beforehand, mm -hmm. uh, before we finish and check, check the situation with the, um, the questions. But uh, the whole kind of like uh, setup when it comes to the technology side of things, yeah. um, you know, there's the, there's the back end, there's the front end, um, of course, the you know, user experience side of things, but then there's the cloud issue. We, we touched upon this yeah. briefly previously, <laughs> and I loved the perspective that you had. Yeah. Uh, how do you see kind of like um, looking at where you're at and, uh, and, and, and also other companies, you know, thinking about how to operate things and, yeah. uh, and et cetera. Um, what's the smart way to go about? Yeah. So, I mean, just before we go into that, mm -hmm. I would like to give you a bit of perspective on sure. how tech world works. Yeah. In tech, there is only 1% of us who are innovators. 10% mm. is contributors yeah. mm -hmm. and the rest 90% are just copying. Mm. I'm in the rest 90%. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the one percent who is innovating, yeah. and on in that one percent, most of them come from Google. Yeah. So all these fancy technologies that we see, or Amazon, or Microsoft, or something like that, yeah. comes from that group. Mm. They let their internal architectures out, make blogs about them, tutorials about them, and stuff, and that is accepted by that next. 10% of contributing community. Yeah. These 10% of contributing community maintain that, promote that, and this is bought in by rest of the people. Yeah. 
So last decade, it was all about moving to cloud. Mm. Everybody is moving to cloud. And I'm yeah. a big promoter of cloud. Yeah. I love cloud. You know, cloud takes all your headaches away. Mm. You know, those machines and uh, storage facilities in your thing, gone. You can just be in, uh, in a beach and working and just with a button going live. Yeah. So as a, pers as, a as a person who wants to work every day, cloud gives you a lot of freedom. Yeah. But cloud also takes you 20 years behind. Mm. For the last 20 years, people have been trying to break the monopoly of the big corporations. So our front end, we are using open source technologies. Yeah. In our back end, we are using open source technologies. For database, yeah. we are using open source technologies. Yeah. And then we are packaging all up yeah. and giving it to one of the three big monopoly giants, yeah. Amazon, Microsoft, or Google, yeah. and saying that, hey, we will take care of it. Yeah. And like I said, last decade was about moving to cloud. This decade is about controlling the cost of cloud. Like imagine how many cloud architectures, uh, architects you have been placing now. Mm. You know, the basic underline of this role is, yeah. hey, I need somebody who can control the cost of our clouds because it's increasing all the time. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. So. So there is a drawback to yeah. this. And I, I am pretty sure that in this decade, a big startup will come, which is going to decentralize cloud. Mm. And, and of course, there is also Web3 and different things who are trying to decentralize internet. Yeah. But I think there should be a middle ground that we can still do what we are doing and not be tied to a monopoly in that sense. Yeah. So. Hopefully that happens. I'm looking forward. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. And I'm just kind of like, just echoing what your word, your previous previous words, easy and lazy. You know, I suppose you yeah. know, the giants sort of understood that as well. That hey, yeah. the developers and uh, and 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 side people, they appreciate easy and lazy as well. Easy and lazy is the way to go. I mean, you make anything easy and lazy, it will sell. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, very true. Good pointers. Um, thinking about now, kind of like you know, going back to the whole notion of of you know a new tech mm. startup yeah. venture, you know, spin off, yeah. and uh, and and the importance of you know business idea, business case, and and then tech solution. Yeah. Um, is there any kind of like uh, aspect that we haven't touched upon at this point? I think a traditional business idea driven mm. concept. Yeah. Um, I think you can reach profitability faster mm. because in a traditional method, it's centered around profitability, yeah. which means that you have found a product or an idea to sell. Yeah. And you are saying that this is our cost yeah. and this is our sales. Yeah. And if we sell enough, here is a million, yeah. right? And how you're scaling it is by, with that model, and you're expanding it in a linear equation. Yeah. So you cannot break this linearity of it, yeah. right? And there is also another concept that you're also assuming that all your experiences from that point will be similar. Yeah. And these notions practically makes a business kind of linear growth. Mm. But we have also seen Volt, non-linear growth. True. We have also seen Volt laying off a lot of people in 2017. Yeah. So there was a risk they took. And this risk is to break this linearity into some form of like, you know, a multiplier of two or multiplier of three or something like that. And what you say is with, with the tech solution, you try to kind of jump the curve. Mm that you make something so good yeah. and you make something so good, but it doesn't have to be that you're promoting that. So one thing with tech solution is that nobody is going to give a sh uh, <laughs> Well, nobody's going to care about it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so nobody is going to care about it, yeah. right? So no one in the world has ever said that let me buy from that store because it's built in React. Yes. Nobody has ever said. Or nobody has ever said that, that let's download that app yeah. because they recently went to cloud. Yeah. So no, your end consumer doesn't need to notice it. Yeah. 
you just invest in these things so that your app becomes better than your competitors. Yeah. So that when somebody comes to your app and this, then you go, goes to your competitor's app, yeah. they feel a difference. Yeah. And that is your branding. You know, that's the thing. So that's why we implement tech solutions. That's why we care about better tech solutions. That's why we want to have the bragging rights to have a better tech solution. Exactly. So, and you don't need to even invest upfront. We built our own site with a consultant mm. from Kalio, uh, yeah. Iona. So it doesn't have to be that you have to already hire a lot of people. Yeah. There are enough people who can help you and you just have to be open-minded to it. So that's important. You know? yeah. So yeah, that, that I would add is, is also pretty important in this case. Yeah. True that. Yeah, and I'm just kind of like thinking about the growth growth marketing, mm. then kind of like to to boost kind of like you know the the, the new app, the new service, yeah. and the people to find it, and then test how it works, and yeah. yada yada yada, and then tweak a little, and uh, yeah. etc. But, uh, but it's a whole different conversation. To be yeah, there. exactly. And also, I mean, one misconception when it comes to tech solution, I mm. touched a bit before. Yeah, it's scalability. You know, mm. people think that once I have invested in a tech thing, yeah. now I can keep selling it. Yes. That's not true. Yeah. You know, That's a completely wrong thinking because just take any company yeah. who has matured and has a good product and anything, has they ever stopped hiring tech people? Yeah. They keep hiring more. Exactly. So it has just replaced traditional hiring with this in that sense, so yeah. Very true. Interesting. It's been a pleasure to to have you, Summer, on board and, and to have this elaborate discussion. Um, there is absolutely nothing uh, from my side to add, kind of like in, in terms of, uh, um, you know, thinking that, hey, you know, we should be looking at it differently. But I would love to sort of elaborate this discussion with another half an hour, but we promise to keep it at half half an hour. So so let's let's do that. So so many thanks at this point. And uh, and I look forward to seeing you on the next uh, discussions at a later point. Thank you.